Greetings, Oracle guys and gals. This is Justin, and in this Oracle YouTube video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to work with read only access modes on an Oracle database, in an Oracle database. So, let's get started. First, we set our Oracle SID to finance. We ensure that we're set properly. And we log in with our SQL Plus program. And in sh we'll see that we are connected as user sys, the DBA. And we are we'll see that we are connected to the correct database finance. Now, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to create a table called names. Okay? Which is an object in my database. And by default, this, is, this object is going to go into the sys table space, which we never recommend but that's where it's going to go in this example. So to create a table we use the command cleverly enough create table. Create table names. Now we set its column att attributes. First name, F name, variable character data type 20 characters long. Okay we created a table called names we describe names we'll see its structure and if we select from names we will see that there is no data in it no rows in it okay so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to insert data in the table insert into names values and we'll put my name in there Justin okay actually didn't need, didn't need to do the commit here but uh, we'll talk about that one um, in a uh, videos where we talk about uh, SQL statements in more in depth. And we'll see when we do a select from that table we now have the value of the of a row that says that has the value of Justin. Alright. Um, now go ahead and type in the following. Select current SCN current system change number from the database and we will see that we have a number that changes constantly okay this is described more in Oracle recovery videos but in Oracle internal videos but basically the system change number as a quick thousand foot overview is the timekeeping mechanism of an Oracle database think of it as the um, timer on your VCR on your old video cassette recorders it knows exactly what time of day it is Oracle it knows exactly what time an operation was performed against an Oracle database. It's Oracle database's internal mechanism for telling time. And no, it's not changing every time I, I click here. Okay? And you can tell that because it jumped. Okay? And it's not doing this every second. Some people think that the, the SCN of the entire database um, changes every second. It does not. It changes every time a transaction is committed against an Oracle database. Let me rephrase, let me say that again. The SCN number, system change number, of an Oracle database does not change every second. It changes every time a transaction is committed, okay, against an Oracle database. And what is and what does committed mean? Committed is when redo is written from the redo log buffer in the SGA in the database server memory and is written to online redo log files. That's a commit. And every time that commit happens, an SCN number is assigned to that transaction. So Oracle knows what point in time that transaction was done. And like I said, uh, this is just a quick overview. I, I, there's a point why I'm showing you this now. You'll find out in a second. Um, but there are other videos out there where I go into more detail of Oracle internals of why that is. So just know now that while the database is up and running, even though you, you even though there is no application connected to this database, and we're really not doing anything, those numbers are going to because this select statement is not really it's not it's not a transaction it's not doing anything. Okay. So don't think that that's what I mean by the database doing something. That's not what I mean. Um, these numbers are, are continually um, increasing and incrementing because Oracle is always doing something. The database is always busy. Even if you shut down the Java application, which is access, accessing that database, or whatever application is accessing that database, and there are no users logged on, guess what? That SCN number is going to, is going to increment all the time, regardless. You log off your database at 9 o'clock at night, you log in 48 hours later, guess what? It's still, it's still going to have incremented by, by, by thousands because 
the Oracle background processes and other Oracle internal stuff is constantly doing things. Okay, Oracle is constantly housekeeping itself. Okay, so just know that Oracle da database is always busy. Okay, now go ahead and type in the following select open mode from the database, and we'll see that we're read, read write. Okay, when you start up a database, just with the startup command, which you'll see, it it goes through all three three phases of Oracle database startup: no mount, mount, and open. But when it doesn't open, automatically it doesn't imp it doesn't an an implicit um, database open read write. Okay, so so Oracle by default will always open the database read write. Okay, um, so just know that under covers, that's default. That's always going to happen. Okay, so here we are starting up our database. Instance started, database mounted. We should get a database open message. <clears throat> there it is. And if I do status select open mode from Beach Solar Time database, read write. So automatically, Oracle database, when you type in the startup command, starts it as read write. So go ahead now and shut down your database again. And read write basically means that we can write to what we want to write to at the database level. So shut down immediate. Closed, dismounted, instant shutdown. Now go ahead and start up your database with the, with the mount option. What that's going to do is it's going to start the instance and mount the database with the control file, and it's going to stop there. Okay, we don't want it to go through all three phases. We want it to stop after phase two, which is what it does, which is what it did. Started the instance, mounted the database, it stopped. Okay, so now I want you to open the database manually. Okay, this is called open a database manually with an option called read only. So type in alter database open read only. Again, that's alter database open read only. And this is going to open our database for us. Database altered. Now when you type in select open mode from V dollar sign database, you'll see it doesn't say read or write anymore, just as it did up here it's now saying read only okay and guess what if you took a look at your SCN you will see that it's not changing even though the database is technically opened and you can connect to it by the way applications can connect to it not just SQL plus sessions so the database is fully accessible to the user community by a SQL plus already application but you can't do anything to the database. You can't update it. So the database is effectively useless from a write perspective. Now, most operations against the database are read only. So read being are read mostly. So it's no maybe it's no big deal for some databases, but for a lot of databases, it's it's a problem. And as you can see, this SCN number, even though the database is open, is not changing. And you can issue this select statement, go away for a month, come back, issue the select statement again. And your database has been up 30 days, and you type it in again, nothing. Why? Because Oracle's frozen. He can't do anything. You can view the data in the Oracle database, but the Oracle database can't update anything because updating it requires it to write, and it's in read-only mode currently. So now, try to insert data into that table we committed earlier. We try to do an insert into names, values, put my name in it again. It says, sorry, or a 1, 16,000. 16, da database open for read-only access. So you cannot make any changes to the database while it's open in read-only mode. Shut down your database. This is how you take a database out of read-only mode. Shut it down. Start it up again without an, without stopping it and do an alter database uh, read only because remember startup does an implicit read write so your database by default is going to open read write database mounted database open select open mode from database read write now. We can do our inserts as many times as we want. No problem. And guess what? We 
database SCNs are now incrementing again because the database is read write and it can do what it has to do. Okay, now that's one level of read only that you can set in Oracle database. The second level I want to discuss is at a table level. Okay, um, actually, no, table space level. Sorry, if that makes more sense. All right, because we're going to work our way down. Okay, so go ahead and let's create a table space. Well, let's see the table spaces we have created already. Select table space name from DBA table spaces. There they are. And let's say, let's just create a table space. Create table space, and we'll call it data uh, 01, data file, uh, C colon slash database, or data finance, data 01 DBF, size 10 meg. Create table space data 01 data file C colon slash database or data finance data 01 dot DBF size 10 meg. Oops. And there's our table space data 01. Okay. Now go ahead and create a table that resides in that table space. So we'll say create table ages. This will be a table that holds the ages of our names, let's say. Create table ages. And we'll say age is, and someone can only be 100 years of age, so we'll say you can only go up to 100. Age 100, table space data 01. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Three characters. That's a, that's three numbers. That's integers. That's what that means. <laughs> All right. So we created a table space called a table called ages. Here's the structure. Uh, ages. No um, data in it currently. And if you say select the table space name from DBA tables where table name is equal to age, we will. Ages, sorry. We will see that the table ages resides in the table space data zero one. Now go ahead and let's insert values into the into the table ages. So insert into ages values, and I'll put my age in there to start. Thirty. Now when we do a select asterisk from ages we will see that my data is in there 30 my piece of data okay so now type in the following type in select status from DBA table spaces where table space name is equal to data 01 so select status from DBA table spaces where table space name equals data 01 we will see that it's online because we can write to it and we can do what we want to do now type in the following alter table space data read only oops zero one alter table space data zero one read only so the second level of read only is t is at a table space layer and now when we do select status from DBA table spaces where table space equals data one we will see that it went from online to read only now Go ahead and let's attempt our insert into ages. I'll put my girlfriend's age in. And look and look and look what we get. Cannot be modified at this time. Why do we get that message? We get that message because the we put the data zero one table space is currently in read only mode, and guess what? The table we're trying to insert into ages resides in the table space name in the table space data 01. So because the table ages is in data 01 and data 01 is set to read only, okay, we cannot insert data into that table. So to go ahead and make the table space rewrite again, we type in alter table space ages read write. Oh, first I want to show you this before I do that. Go ahead and type in the following. Type in drop table ages table drop uh oh 
well, let's pre -re let's create our table again. Table ages number. I'm sorry, uh, age number three. Table space data zero one is read only. Cannot allocate space. Okay, you can still drop date. You can still drop the table space the tables in a table space that's set read only. This is an important point. You can still do that. Why? Because the data dictionary isn't marked read only, and the data dictionary resides the Oracle data dictionary, which is the metadata of the of the database itself, resides in the system table space. You can't take the system table space offline. I mean read only. You can't make him read only. Okay, so so he can st so the drop command will still work. It will still update the data dictionary. He just you just can't so you can drop objects in a table space that's currently marked read only, but you can't update objects or in a table space that's read only, which explains why we can drop it no problem, but why we couldn't create a table in it. So go ahead and bring it back online. Create alter table space data zero one read write. Take a look at the status of it. And we will see that it's online again. And now we will be able to recreate our table space, no problem. I mean our table. And we'll be able to insert our data. Oops. Insert into pages. Yep, there we go. No problem again. Okay. Now there's one more level of read only access. Okay, and we'll talk about that in video number two of this series.